Good day and welcome virtually to the Canada School of Public Service. Uh, my name is Joshua Frame. I'm the national chair of the Federal Youth Network. Um, au nom de l'École de la Fonction Publique du Canada et au nom du Réseau des Jeunes Fonctionnaires Fédéraux, uh, j'aimerais souhaiter la bienvenue aux participants à cet événement. I would like to acknowledge the land uh, on which I am joining you from um, is the territory uh, of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. Um, some of you today may be joining us from various parts of the country. I think we'll have participants from uh, every uh, possible place in Canada today. Um, and I encourage you to take a moment to recognize and acknowledge the ter territory that you're occupying. Uh, before we begin, um, I'm going to cover off a few housekeeping items. Uh, en raison de la uh, bande passante, uh, nous vous recommandons de vous déconnecter uh, de votre LPV, ou en anglais, votre VPN, uh, ce qui vous permettra d'avoir une meilleure expérience. So please log off your VPN to help you experience the event at the fullest level. Um, if you are experiencing technical issues with the webcast, uh, we recommend that you relaunch the webcast link provided to you. Uh, please note that we have simultaneous interpretation um, available as well as CART services, uh, which is communications access real-time translation. Uh, and uh, both of those are available for this event. Um, our usual method of delivering simultaneous interpretation is not available today. Um, so if you wish to access SI, we ask that you dial into the teleconference lines provided on the main banner in the VXPO lobby. Uh, you may listen to the translation while watching the video broadcast on your primary device. Um, and throughout the session today, you can send in your questions uh, by connecting to uh, wooclap.com. I'll spell that out for you because it may not be entirely clear. So that's w-o-o-c-l-a-p.com um, on your uh, smart device, so either on your laptop or on your uh, phone or, or whatever uh, device you have with you. Um, and you will use the code CBC18. That is CBC18. Um, so that will allow you to enter your questions, to upvote questions, and to really engage in today's session, um, as we have one of our, our favorite people in La Riviere with us today. Um, so in terms of uh, the structure today, this is our first session for Career Bootcamp. Um, we have a ton of people registered uh, for uh, our, our conference that will be happening over the next week and a half. Um, so at the end of every day, uh, we'll be posting the resources from that day's session. Um, so in English and French, and you'll be able to find that um, on the link that was provided to you uh, in your, your registration email. Um, every day as well, we'll have networking sessions happening uh, from 4.30 to 5.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time um, for, uh, for each of the five days. Um, and there will be themes for, for those sessions as well. On the first and last days, we'll be focusing um, just on an open networking session. Everyone kind of getting, getting to know each other, um, getting to know where people are joining us from. Um, and then there will be theme days uh, throughout the week. Uh, so tomorrow we'll be connecting with our, our regional networks, um, of which uh, Catherine uh, Leblanc is the co-chair for, uh, for New Brunswick. Um, and uh, on the 25th, we'll be connecting with the GC's movers and shakers. And on the 26th, uh, we'll be connecting with uh, GC communities and networks. Um, as well, I'm sorry, we have a lot of programming to go through and this is the first session, um, but as well on, uh, on uh, Thursday, January 27th, we'll be hosting um, a chat in partnership with Leaders GC. Um, and you're welcome to join that chat on Twitter. Um, that will be happening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we'll be sharing more info um, about that on our social media. Uh, accounts uh, throughout uh, the next week. So as you go through today's session, um, engage with us on social media uh, using the hashtag CBC underscore CDC. Um, alors, utilisez le, le hashtag pour engager avec le réseau des jeunes fonctionnaires fédéraux. Uh, vous pouvez aussi utiliser le, le compte uh, Twitter uh, de uh, LGFF uh, at FYN underscore RJFF. Um, so engage with us using those hashtags, uh, tagging the Finn account, share your thoughts, share your insights. What, what did you find interesting about this session today? Uh, where, you know, what more do you want to find out throughout the rest of the sessions at Career Bootcamp? Um, engage with the participants. So this is a great opportunity for you to meet new public servants, to meet people who are in a similar sort of uh, career, uh, career, not crossroads necessarily, but a, a time in their career. Um, to be able to, uh, to connect with them, to build your network, um, and to obviously learn you know, throughout uh, the various sessions from our, uh, from our panelists uh, and to learn from the, the subject matter experts that will be you know, sharing their experience and sharing their knowledge with you. So 
Uh, without further ado, um, je suis ravi de débuter l'événement d'aujourd'hui qui s'intitule uh, « Démystifier les bases du processus d'embauche du GC um, ». So I'm happy to uh, start off today's session uh, demystifying the building blocks of the GC hiring process. Um, and just quickly, so in terms of that WooClap uh, process, we'll be going into an open Q&A following our, our prepared questions. Um, and in that point, you know, submit the questions that you want to ask using that platform. So on wooclap.com uh, and then enter CBC18. Submit those questions, upvote the questions, um, and then Kathleen will pose them to, uh, to Lynn. So we'll, we'll find out the questions you want to ask and then pose those um, as we go along. So uh, Catherine Leblanc uh, is our moderator for today. Uh, Catherine is the co-chair of the uh, New Brunswick Federal Youth Network. Um, et puis uh, Catherine uh, va être une excellente uh, moderatrice aujourd'hui. Et puis uh, je vais passer la parole à Catherine. Merci Catherine. Merci beaucoup, Josh. Euh, oui, comme Josh a dit, euh, mon nom, c'est Catherine. Euh, puis, j'aimerais juste reconnaître que moi, je suis sur euh, le territoire non cédé euh, des peuples Mi'kmaq et Olastekwe. Donc, euh, je vais prendre un petit moment pour vous présenter à Lynn Larivière, our, our guest of honor today, our expert. Um, so, Lynn Larivière is currently Assistant Director, Indigenous Recruitment, Retention and Advancement with Employment Social Development Canada. Um, she most recently worked with the Labour Program as Manager of Recruitment and Staffing. Prior to joining the ESDC, she was the Assistant Director of the Public Service Commission's Toronto Regional Office. Um, Lynn has over 20 years of experience in the public service in human resources and diversity and inclusion, uh, having worked in multiple departments, mainly in staffing, recruitment, HR, planning, outreach, and talent scouting. And Lynn is joining us from Toronto today. Bonjour, Lynn. Bonjour, Catherine. Uh, good afternoon, Catherine. Thank you, um, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And that was a mouthful. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be here today. It's impressive. It's an impressive career. And I think that it shows that you're absolutely the best person to talk to us about um, the subject at hand today. So, on va commencer euh, la session d'aujourd'hui. On va discuter un peu du processus d'embauche au gouvernement du Canada. Donc, on va passer à travers la fiche. Mais avant qu'on commence avec la fiche, puis on pose, euh, on va en détail. Euh, J'aimerais savoir, Lynn, c'est quoi la, la, la dotation à la fonction publique? Qui fait quoi? Qui décide quoi? Parce que j'imagine que ce n'est pas, euh, pas tout chacun qui fait ses propres choix. Donc, euh, comment ça fonctionne, la dotation? Oui, euh, bien, donc, si je peux commencer. Euh, je pense que ça commence un petit peu plus large là, que la dotation, euh, mais peut-être qu'on devrait s'en garder euh, à la dotation cet après-midi. Euh, et donc, je pense qu'une grande partie de ça, euh, je vais peut-être peut-être mentionner brièvement euh, le secrétariat du Conseil du Trésor euh, du Canada, qui est l'employeur. Euh, et donc, de là, euh, le, le, le secrétariat du Conseil du Trésor, euh, ça gouverne ou, en partie euh, les règlements et, euh, sur la dotation. Euh, en partie aussi avec la commission de la fonction publique, puis je, je vais y a, à en arriver. Euh, mais comme peut-être niveau fonctionnaire ou comme fonctionnaire, euh, si les gens écoutent, si il y a des fonctionnaires qui écoutent, euh, vous avez peut-être travaillé avec le conseil du trésor ou même juste faire des recherches sur leur site, leur site web euh, euh, concernant des conventions collectives, euh, l'information sur la performance, la gestion de talent, euh, valeur et éthique, des choses comme ça. Euh, Là, si on, on y arrive à la commission de la fonction publique, euh, puis si vous ne connaissez pas la commission de la fonction publique, vous peut-être vous connaissez qu'est-ce qu'ils offrent comme programme euh, pour étudiants, pour gradués, euh, tel que le programme euh, de recrutement postsecondaire aussi, puis euh, la commission a aussi des programmes spécialisés aussi pour, et pour, pour les deux, les étudiants et, et pour les gradués. Euh, la commission aussi... Euh, a le système d'emploi de, euh, GC. Et donc, si vous recherchez pour des emplois, soit que vous êtes à l'extérieur de la fonction publique ou à l'intérieur de la fonction publique, c'est là où est-ce qu'on peut rechercher euh, les, les euh, opportunités d'emploi. 
Et donc, il y a un site web, euh, il, y une, il y a une capacité, le site web a une, une capacité de recherche de mots-clés. Euh, aussi, euh, vous pouvez vous enregistrer pour des alertes emploi euh, qui vous envoient un courriel concernant certaines recherches, certains critères que vous avez recherchés ou que vous aimeriez connaître euh, sur les opportunités d'emploi dans le site euh, Emploi GC. Euh, donc là, je sais aussi que je pense qu'on avait parlé, euh, on aimerait peut-être entendre, c'est quoi le rôle des gestionnaires et les ressources humaines? Tu sais, euh, des fois, on ne on sait, sait pas vraiment comment ça fonctionne. Euh, on voit les, les opportunités d'emploi sur le site. Ensuite, tu sais, où est-ce que ça va? Euh, et donc, peut-être, juste peut-être pour dire que les ressources humaines, euh, donc les conseillers et conseillères ressources humaines, s'occupe vraiment de communiquer avec la Commission de la fonction publique, s'occupe du site euh, de ressourcement à la fonction publique, euh, regarde vraiment qu'est-ce qui a été entré dans le système, puis aussi le travail de très près avec les gestionnaires d'embauche et ou les membres de comité de sélection euh, qui s'occupent du processus de sélection pour lequel qui aurait été affiché sur euh, le site Emploi GC. Et donc, de là, tu sais, les applications, ils sont regardés, par, euh, triés par les ressources humaines, euh, puis ensuite envoyé aux au gestionnaires ou aux au, au membres de comité de sélection pour le processus. Mais là aussi, avant, que, avant que ça arrive là, sur le site Emploi GC, euh, les gestionnaires, il faut qu'ils fassent des décisions. Donc, eux, ils travaillent avec leurs partenaires à l'interne, dans les ministères, afin de pouvoir décider là, quel genre de poste qu'ils ont de disponible, de vacant, qu'est-ce qui s'en vient, euh, un peu regarder leur, finance, le, leur, leur planification et, et le... Euh, la situation budgétaire du, de, leur, de leur organisme. Euh, et donc, c'est de là que ça vient euh, afin de pouvoir travailler avec leur, les ressources humaines par après et afficher des postes sur Emploi GC afin de pouvoir trouver les candidats et faire l'embauche de candidats et de nouveaux employés à la fonction publique. Donc, si je comprends bien, if I understand correctly, there's a lot of people involved <laughs> at various stages Um, in the hiring process. So I guess, again, before we jump into the poster itself, um, this is a question that I've asked myself many, many times as a public servant, but why is the application and poster um, so long and so complicated? Why is it, why does it ask so many questions? I know we're going to go into details in some, in some categories, but can you just give us an idea of why it's so, so long, so complicated? Well, I think, well, you know, when I saw the question, I thought we were going to discuss this and I thought, oh, we, oui, I agree with you, Catherine. Uh, I think in my personal experience too, when I look at them, sometimes I'm thinking, oh, it's too long, you know, but um, I think in part there, I mean, what I should say probably is that in recent years, you've probably noticed, um, well, at least I've noticed um, that they're a little bit shorter. So what, what HR advisors and, and the hiring managers are trying to do is make them, make them more, I guess, like ease of, ease of use kind of thing, like more friendly um, in the way that they're written. Um, and I think we're going to get into something more, into more of that later. But, um, but it's also really important to, like the information that's in there is important. Um, and I, and I think when I was writing my notes, I, I repeat this many, so many times, and you'll hear me say it today, like, it's really important to read the information that's on here. Um, and it's for your success, right? Like if, if you're interested in applying to the job opportunities that you're seeing, um, even though they may seem quite long and there's a lot of information to kind of decipher and understand and then, and make sure that you're replying correctly, um, Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but but it's also important to cover like the important aspects of it. Okay, well, that is, that kind of answers. And you're right. Um, I did notice in the past few years that they do get a little, a little bit shorter. I I mean, we can discuss this later as well. But I, you're right. I've I've noticed that as well. But um, I think I think that we can go through. Uh, oh no, I have another question before we go to the poster. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, um, comment on décide c'est quoi l'information qui va dessus sans aller trop en détail encore une fois parce que justement on va passer à travers chaque section puis décortiquer un peu quelle information qu'il y a dedans euh, l'affiche. Mais comment on fait pour décider euh, qu'est-ce qui va où comment on tu sais 
Je ne sais pas euh, si tu peux nous donner une petite, euh, petite idée là-dessus. Oui. Um, c'est euh, en partie, c'est comme je viens de mentionner aussi, c'est les gestionnaires avec leurs partenaires en ressources humaines afin qu'ils décident vraiment euh, qu'est-ce qui devrait être inclus dans, dans la fiche um, ainsi que par rapport à tu sais, comment le, le processus va se dérouler. Et donc, cette information-là, si elle est planifiée à l'avance, qui est recommandée, euh, devrait être inclue dans le processus afin de pouvoir, euh, tu sais, pas engendrer des délais, pas induire les, les candidats en erreur non plus. Euh, puis comme on dirait en anglais, tu sais, « give them false hope ». On veut vraiment leur, leur donner l'information nécessaire euh, puis être bien informé afin de pouvoir postuler au, 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 aux emplois. Um, c'est vraiment, um, c'est comme je pensais en, en anglais, « fine tooth combing uh, ». Le passage là, au ping fin là, uh, est principalement effectué par les ressources humaines. Um, cependant, aucune décision est, est prise là, sans, sans communiquer avec le gestionnaire d'embauche. Donc, comme conseiller ou conseillère en ressources humaines, uh, tu peux offrir des recommandations au gestionnaire afin de pouvoir avoir un processus euh, qui va bien se dérouler. Et donc, euh, aucune décision ne <rire> sont faites par rapport au, comme de la, du côté des ressources humaines. C'est vraiment en discussion avec le gestionnaire d'embauche ou le comité de sélection. OK. Ah, ben merci, pour, merci pour cette réponse-là. Euh, puis comme j'ai dit, on va, on va passer à travers les différentes sections là, juste pour donner une, une meilleure idée. Fait que vous devriez voir euh, à l'instant euh, les... Voyons, le... le, le les... Les Voyons, la fiche. <rire> je cherchais. Oui, la fiche. Vous devriez voir la fiche sur l'écran tout de suite. Juste un instant, j'ai perdu mes notes. Là, fait que je vais faire ça que je te, je te pose les, les bonnes questions. Euh, donc, si on regarde à, à la fiche, um, so can, we, can you explain to us a bit what we're seeing here on the screen right now? Like in the top box, I think everybody has seen it before. If you applied to a position at the Government of Canada, you've seen this box at the top of every single job opportunity. So can you give us a bit of, uh, of information on what's included there and what we should be looking at maybe? Yeah, I feel like a little bit, I don't know if I should look at my notes or I should look at the poster. <laughs> um, Yeah, I think, uh, well, that's, this is really why we're here today, right? Like it's, it's getting right into it and, and explaining really um, what people are seeing when they're going on the site um, and kind of deciphering all of this information, right? Um, so what you're seeing on top here, um, that's more bare bones. What I had in my notes is that, you know, sometimes us HR folks, we like to be a little, cre a little bit creative. Um, so here, this is a very professional one, says policy analyst. Um, but if you would have worked in one of my teams, I, put a, I would have probably pushed you to put something a little bit more creative and catchy in there. Um, so you may have seen um, some posters, you know, that would have given it, would give like a, a more fun, fun title. Um, and if it doesn't really say what the position is or the position title, it will be stated quite closely, probably below all of this uh, inf important information. Uh, because that needs to be stated there. But um, I think sometimes we want to make these a little bit catchy. Uh, mm -hmm. But we also, like in HR, we have to work along with um, how the how the system is, is created. And so we're we're a little bit um, confined sometimes to to what it what how the system is built. So here we are. This is what it looks like. So you would see um, the the position title. We always we already went through that. Um, the you have the name of the department. Uh, and so that's probably what would catch your eye first. Um, uh, and, you know, like if, if it's a department that you may not be familiar, there are some micro organizations out there, some smaller ones that you may not have heard. Um, what I would probably recommend is, is kind of go and, and, and look that up, right? Um, look up the, the organization and, and see what they're all about to see if this really interests you any further. Um, then below we have the group and level. And I mean, That's um, if from if you're if you're looking at a, a job open to the public, um, which is also advertised on on the, the GC jo GC jobs website. Um, you know, the group is really the classification level that the government has identified to certain positions or groups in the public service. Um, and those are attached to collective agreements and and, and how you know, work is, is described um, for that specific group. And then the level um, is, is what you would 
be um, hired as. So there are different levels. In this example, it's an EC5, um, but there, you know, you could be looking at EC2s to EC6, EC7 jobs across the public service. So, um, and then what we have here, you'll see these complicated names that say acting, deployment, and indeterminate. And what does that even mean? Um, indeterminate means. Hopefully what that means, uh, means an indeterminate appointment. Uh, so you could be considered if the process, if you would be qualified in that process, um, you could be hired for an indeterminate appointment. If you're within the public service, um, as this ad explains, um, if you're already at the EC5 le uh, group and level um, and you're interested in just kind of getting more information, like more experience or different experience uh, or kind of changing, changing it up um, in your career, you could be considered for a deployment. Um, and then acting means that, for example, if you're I'll just make it really simple. If you're an EC4 position, um, and that could be your, your substantive and what you work at every day, um, but you're, again, you're considering perhaps maybe some, you know, gaining some new skills or new experience, um, then you could potentially be considered for an acting appointment. And I, I, the stipulations for all of that would be further on um, in the process. Um, and then you have the salary. So then that tells you there's a range. And so this is what we normally include. We normally include the range for an EC5, for example, um, in, in the selection process. And that's decided. I mean, you could start at the bottom or you could, you could get in somewhere in the middle there or at the top. It really depends on where you are um, at your current group and level in your current job. That, that was a question I had, actually. Like, can, because of they're showing a... A range. a range. Can you negotiate your salary? Can you ask for to be at step two? Because I know it works by steps. So is that a possibility to kind of negotiate? <laughs> yeah, well, we asked the, the real questions here, right? At these events. <laughs> Putting you, always on the spot. Push, you guys always push me and put me on the spot. Um, I think in this case, if we're discussing an internal appointment, um, the person would already be within the public service. So their chance kind of has sailed by uh, in this case. But if you are in, if, if you are new to the public service and you would be applying to jobs open to the public, um, I mean, depending, um, I've seen some situations where, where new employees can negotiate their salary at the beginning. You only kind of get one chance, uh, which I had no idea about when I first started um, in the public service. But um, yeah, I think it gives you, and I think these days too, like, you know, we're looking for, particular, you know, like particular skills or some, maybe some specialized skills. So that could happen there. Um, if, if you're being appointed to the public service for the first time, there could be some leeway. You might be coming from uh, the private sector and, and, you know, you, you might want to kind of negotiate something a little bit closer to your current salary. Um, always understanding though, too, like the public service is a long, you know, longer term career. You're going to be looking at various opportunities throughout your career. There'll be opportunities to develop, and to, to, you know, to move up. And so, I mean, it, it's a consideration and yes, it's, it's sometimes it is, is a, it is available as an option. Okay. okay well, um, and then we see the closing date. So here, mm. like, that's the part that you really want to pay attention to. Um, you might want what I do anyways. Um, if there's something that I'm really, that I'm working on and I don't really want to apply to this, um, I would, I would kind of bookmark that in my calendar and be like, okay, this is closing on this date. I want enough time to really, you know, write up my, either my cover letter, finesse, you know, my, my resume or answer the screening questions. So you want to be on time for this, uh, because the minute that it, the, the clock will strike 12, um, <laughs> and then you kind of lose your opportunity. <clears throat> Another thing maybe I would mention at this point is, uh, you know, you might be, you might be seeing, or you might've gotten a notification for this process. Uh, you might be really interested in applying, um, but then, you know, you've been busy, you haven't had time, you haven't completed your application, you know, sometimes depending on the number of applicants, sometimes, um, job opportunities get extended by a day or two, maybe a week, depending on the number of applicants. So you kind of want to just kind of check that, you know, go into your account, see, is it still up? You know, did they extend the date? And if it's really, um, you know, by the next, you know, the, the last few days of it being open, you kind of want to probably work on your application because uh, it probably means that, you know, once once the deadline is passed, you won't have that opportunity anymore. OK, so ça répond à une question que j'avais, c'était est-ce qu'on peut quand même appliquer si on manquait à, à 
minuit, une minute, est-ce qu'on sera quand même considéré? Mais si le système ne te permet pas d'appliquer plus, plus tard que telle heure, c'est sûr que là, c'est difficile. Euh, est-ce qu'on pourrait euh, envoyer notre, notre application à la personne contact? Est-ce que c'est quelque chose que tu ferais ou quelque chose que tu éviterais de faire à ce moment-là? Oh, ben là, euh, je pense que les gens peuvent faire qu'est-ce qu'ils veulent, mais vraiment, euh, en, en termes de comment ça fonctionne, you know, après, après que la date limite elle est passée, c'est vraiment... Mm. Parce que, tu sais, il y, y a plein d'autres candidats qui ont appliqué à l'heure et à temps, euh, qui ont soumis leurs demandes. Et donc, ça, c'est les demandes là, euh, qui, vont être, qui vont être reçues. Euh, N'importe quoi peut arriver, par exemple, mais vraiment, ouais. les candidats qui ont postulé euh, sur le processus tel quel euh, par rapport euh, aux les, 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 les directives indiquées dans la mm -hmm. fiche, euh, c'est les candidats qui vont être considérés, euh, considérés dans l'ensemble du processus de sélection. OK. Ça, puis, euh, tu sais, après que, après que la fiche ferme, le, le, le bouton euh, sur « Appliquer en ligne » ou « Postuler en ligne euh, », ne sera plus sur la fiche. Et donc, vous avez manqué de temps. <rire> je ne sais plus disponible. Il n'y a, pas, y a pas de façon de le faire. Effectivement. Et de le faire à temps, c'est ça qui est l'important. Mm -hmm. euh, je ne sais pas si tu avais autre chose à dire pour la boîte, mais sinon, on pourrait passer peut-être au, au reste, euh, à la prochaine section, si ben, tu veux, de, de la fiche. Y a quelque chose d'autre que tu voulais ajouter sur oui, cette boîte-là? Oui, ben, peut-être qu'on pourrait passer juste à la dernière partie ah, qui oui. était euh, « Qui peut appliquer? Oui. » Et encore là, c'est une partie très importante euh, de la fiche. Euh, c'est vraiment de bien, bien regarder qu'est-ce qui est indiqué là. Euh, ça indique vraiment qui peut postuler. Donc, pour les employés, euh, mais si c'est un, si un poste ouvert au public, euh, ça va indiquer autre chose euh, comme Canadien euh, euh, ou quoi que ce soit. Et donc, moi, comme faites pas comme moi. Là. Moi, des fois, je suis super excitée. Je regarde une affiche je suis comme, ah, oh, wow, c'est un bon titre, puis c'est un bon niveau, puis il y a plein de la bonne expérience, puis là, je rencontre ça. Ensuite, je retourne, je suis comme, ah, oh, ben je ne peux pas appliquer. Donc, mm. c'est vraiment important de regarder ça au début. Euh, et puis, comme ça, là, vous ne serez pas déçus. Et donc, si vous, ça l'indique vraiment si vous pouvez postuler au processus. Excellent, ben super. Euh, je, je voulais juste aussi rappeler à tout le monde qui, qui écoute que l'affiche, les, 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 les documents qu'on partage aujourd'hui sont disponibles sur la page Wiki euh, du camp de carrière ou euh, du, euh, du réseau des jeunes fonctionnaires fédéraux. Donc, les informations sont habituellement sur euh, le site Expo que vous avez reçu. Puis sinon, je pense qu'ils seront peut-être partagés à un autre moment donné. Donc, euh, si vous cherchez l'information de, de l'affiche qu'on vous présente aujourd'hui, euh, elle est disponible pour vous. Um, so, If we go back to the rest of the, the next part of the, the poster. Um, donc, le, les messages importants, qu'est-ce qu'on qu qu peut trouver dans cette section-là? Um, est-ce que c'est toujours la même genre d'information qui, qui est retrouvée dans cette section-là ou est-ce que est, ça varie d'un endroit à l'autre? Est-ce qu'il y a quelque chose de particulier qu'il faudrait qu'on qu regarde ou qu'on porte attention? Oui, non. Encore là, là c'est la réponse, elle est non, c'est pas toujours pareil. C'est vraiment important de lire l'information ici, là, comme vous pouvez voir euh, sur celle-ci comme exemple. Il y, a, il y a seulement un paragraphe, mais vous pouvez en, en, en visiter d'autres annonces, euh, puis vous allez trouver des, par, des, parfois d'autres informations là. Euh, ça pourrait, euh, dire récemment, là, maintenant, avec euh, l'attestation sur la vaccination, mm. il pourrait avoir de l'information là-dessus. Euh, il pourrait avoir de l'information sur l'environnement de travail ou l'emplacement de travail. Euh, maintenant qu'on travaille euh, euh, à, à la maison, donc ça pourrait indiquer des dates ou un, un moment où est-ce que ça, ça pourrait changer, des choses comme ça. Euh, Peut-être si c'est... Euh, pour ce, ce, ce ministère-là ou, ou euh, cette organisation-là, peut-être que, tu sais, that's the way of the future. Euh, mm -hmm. Peut-être que là, tu sais, ils vont peut-être travailler la maison. Euh, puis peut-être que cette information, ça sera indiqué là. Euh, J'en ai vu aussi où est-ce qu'ils ont fourni l'information sur comment aider aux candidats euh, à postuler. Donc, ils auraient peut-être euh, indiqué un, 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 un lien là où est-ce que vous vous pouvez aller voir des vidéos ou euh, d'autres informations sur comment postuler au processus. Um, ça pourrait aussi te donner plus d'informations sur le ministère, peut-être leurs um, leur différentes régions, um, où est-ce qu'ils sont, sont vraiment localisés. Et donc, uh, tu sais, des, des informations comme ça, c'est important à lire. OK. 
Donc, puis si on regarde cette affiche-ci, puis encore une fois, je ne sais pas si ça peut varier d'un endroit à l'autre, mais um, so if we look at the, the, that section, important messages, we see assessment accommodation. So can, does that mean we can ask for accommodation throughout the process? And if so, how, how does that work? How, how do I manifest that I need yeah. accommod accommod accommodations? <laughs> yeah, that's a good catch, actually. So, yes, please do. So if you see that information there, and that's why it's really important to read, um, if, if you do require accommodations, uh, you know, if you've been accommodated in the past for, you know, in certain assessments or um, how to apply even, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I would suggest that you 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 tell us otherwise we won't know and you want to succeed we want to see you succeed so um it's best to you know to to flag that early to be able to put all of the pieces in place for for you to be able to apply properly and to be able to be accommodated properly for you to be able to succeed in both the application process and the assessment phase of the process for sure and we work you know like when if if ever not all accommodations are straightforward. Some of them are, some of them aren't. And so we work with other partners too, right? To be able to make sure that we have all of those pieces in place in a timely manner for you to be able to not miss any steps um, or for, to, you know, to, to get into any delays. So it's really important. And I assume like you can ask for accommodations at, like if you forget to ask, let's say at the top, or you're not aware that you can at the beginning of the process. I'm I'm assuming you can ask later on in the process for accommodations. Yeah, like you may not need accommodation for every part of the process, mm, right? Yeah, right. Um, and and we're all very good at systems and computers. And, um, and so, yeah, it might be just related to one specific part of the process, um, maybe one, even one specific part of the, of the evaluation of the assessment phase. So you might even just want to ask for that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yes, that's possible for sure. Um, so I guess we'll go down to the next, uh, the next section. So the intent of the process, I've seen, um, I've seen this, you see it in every poster basically, but what does it mean? I know that I read it sometimes and I'm confused. I'm like, is it a pool I'm applying for? Is it one job, two jobs? What's, what's, what's the information we should be looking for in the intent of the process? Yeah, I mean, what's normally in there, um, it gives you information on how many positions that they might be planning on filling um, with this process or with the, the pool. And, and this is another thing, right? It, it might even tell you what kind of, of, of pool that they'll be established, if any. Maybe there won't be any pools. Maybe they'll just be appointments uh, directly from, you know, uh, the, the persons who qualify, Um, it might tell you what kind of what kind of pool um, is going to be to be um, uh, you know created out of the, out of this process depending on the number of, of applicants too number of, of qualified candidates it could be partially assessed um, it could be fully assessed um, which would mean fully qualified but there could be parts of the assessment that could be done you know further along in the process while you could still be um, in a pool where, you know, managers um, can, can look at your applications, you could be referred and then there might be some, you know, further assessments if the entire process is not completely assessed by the time that they offer um, the candidates um, to hiring managers. That could be the case too. Um, yeah, I think, I, I think mostly, you know, and you see there some, sometimes it's just positions to be filled. You see one in this one, it, it could be more than that. Um, and then this one even talks about the language profiles mm -hmm. of the positions to be staffed. So I think we're going to go through that a little bit later, but yeah, it, it's this kind of information that could be in there. All right. Um, I'm just being asked to remind everybody that uh, our usual method of delivering simultaneous interpretation is not available today, unfortunately. So if you wish to access um, SI, we ask that you dial into the teleconference lines and it was provided through the main banner um, in the V Expo lobby. And I think the information may have been in the, uh, the email um, that you received from the Canada School of Public Service. So just a quick reminder about that. Um, so if we continue on with the rest uh, of the of the, the poster, because we need to, I think we need to get to the kind of the bone, or not the bones, but the the um, the, the core of it, the heart of the the poster itself. So um, 
Je pense que les, la section où est-ce que ça dit les renseignements que vous devez fournir, je pense que ça, ça va de soi. C'est pas trop, ça pas besoin vraiment d'explication. Vous devez fournir cette information-là. Mais euh, qu'est-ce qu'on peut dire quand on, on parle des autres sections? Euh, par rapport aux études ou par rapport aux qualifications essentielles, les équivalences de diplôme, l'expérience. Donc, qu'est-ce que ça veut? Qu'est-ce qu'on. Ouais, c'est quoi ça veut dire cette information-là dans, dans la fiche? Oui, um, ça c'est vraiment, mais c'est comme tu as dit, c'est l'information que, que vous devez répondre. Donc, c'est l'information qui devrait être là, euh, qui a été déterminée, qui est nécessaire pour le poste, um, éducation et expérience. Um, donc, l'éducation là, dans celui-ci, ça l'explique que c'est un degré universitaire. Um, et donc, vous devrez répondre um, à ces exigences-là dans votre demande d'emploi. Euh, aussi l'expérience. Like, Ceci, c'est vraiment les éléments là, comme nécessaires, là, indispensables pour le processus. Um, puis chacune de ces, de, de ces, de ces qualifications-là, que ce soit l'éducation ou l'expérience, doit être évaluée et vous, vous devez satisfaire um, um, uh, à ces critères-ci uh, ou les critères qui ont été indiqués sur la fiche. Um, aussi, uh, dans votre demande d'emploi, vous devez euh, bien expliquer euh, comment vous rencontrez les exigences. Et donc, pour l'éducation, c'est important d'indiquer où est-ce que vous avez gradué, quel genre de diplôme que vous avez obtenu. Euh, en termes d'expérience, c'est comme vous pouvez voir ici, là, on en a choisi un pas mal compliqué, là, euh, qui dit, euh, tu sais, qui indique l'expérience, puis il y a beaucoup de... Et vous devrez avoir ça et ça et ça. Et donc, c'est important de bien pouvoir euh, répondre au questionnaire euh, d'évaluation ou de présélection dans, dans l'annonce ou, ou dans euh, le, le système là, pour appliquer. Et vraiment de bien définir comment vous avez obtenu l'expérience, où vous avez obtenu l'expérience. Euh, et nous donner, quel genre, comme, donner un genre d'exemple de, de, de comment vous avez bien obtenu euh, l'expérience. Euh, C'est important aussi, aussi d'identifier... Euh, que vous avez répondu, comme dans celui-ci, je ne peux pas voir tout l'éclat, mais euh, la formulation d'options, de recommandations et les conseils à la haute gestion, c'est vraiment important de nous trouver des exemples de comment vous avez déjà rencontré ce travail-là, vous avez déjà fait ce travail-là, euh, vous avez l'expérience et nous vient de le démontrer. Donc, c'est important de vraiment regarder et de lire là, toutes les petites parties, là, puis de qu'est-ce que ça voudrait bien dire euh, afin de pouvoir répondre euh, aux, aux exigences exigences euh, et d'être euh, présélectionné. Justement, t as, t as, tu viens de mentionner, de bien, li... ouais, de, de, <rire> mentionner de, de bien lire, passer de comprendre qu'est-ce que ça veut dire. Est-ce qu'il y a des trucs par rapport à ça? Parce qu'il y a des fois, il y a des, il y a des exigences ou des, des qualifications qui sont demandées. En tout cas, moi, de mon côté, je sais que j'ai déjà lu quelque chose par trois fois en anglais, en français, puis je, je comprenais encore peut-être pas, peut-être là, je, le signe qu'il ne fallait pas j'applique pour le poste, mais ça ne ça me disait rien. <rire> tu sais, ça me disait rien. Il fallait que je te pose la question. C'est moi qui comprends mal, mais tu as des trucs par rapport à, à ça pour euh, essayer de décortiquer l'information? Oui. Euh, Peut-être que ce que je voudrais dire, c'est que quand on développe les annonces, euh, les annonces d'emploi ou les affiches d'emploi, euh, il y a plusieurs personnes qui regardent les annonces avant que ça soit affiché sur le site web. Euh, plusieurs parties, différentes personnes. Euh, tu sais, les experts, peut-être dans la matière, ont, ont regardé et offert des, tu sais, des, des, des recommandations, des suggestions à comment bien écrire l'expérience qui est recherchée. Um, donc, ça, ça, ça c'est une chose. Ensuite, uh, tu sais, il y a peut-être des gens qui ne comprennent pas. Peut-être là, oui, c'est comme tu dis, peut-être que peut je n'ai pas l'expérience. Pourquoi que je me sens comme je rencontre peut-être pas tous les critères. Mais là, tu sais, on en voit, on en voit cinq. Um, et donc, il faut vraiment répondre euh, aux cinq critères d'expérience. Um, si tu te trouves um, que tu penses, tu sais, j'en ai au moins deux, trois, um, mais je rencontre peut-être pas, c'est peut-être quelque chose là, um, uh, que tu aimerais aller re, chercher uh, et pouvoir développer. Ensuite, si tu sais qu'il y a vraiment quelque chose, peut-être une erreur qui a, été, qui a été inclue ou quoi que ce soit, puis que euh, c'est trop difficile de pouvoir répondre. Encore là, vous pouvez toujours communiquer euh, avec les, la, la personne contact sur la fiche. Je pense qu'on a, a ça comme question plus tard. Et donc, mm -hmm. 
c'est important de puis, puis se préparer à l'avance aussi, là, pas attendre la, la dernière soirée, euh, de dire, tu sais, oh, je comprends vraiment pas, puis là, j'ai besoin d'aide. Um, c'est vraiment important de le faire à l'avance. So, I guess that kind of brings me to the next question, which is related to the next section. Um, so, is there a difference between what's essential qualifications in this section in the 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 information you must provide and then the information or the qualifications that are identified in the other qualifications because it seems like it seems like you need all of them but from what i understand you may not need all of them so can you clarify right a bit? right right so as you see on the top the page that we were just on it said essential qualifications so that means exactly what that means so, it's essential yeah. those are your must-haves for sure um and then when you get to the asset so we see here on the next page asset education and experience so like other qualifications these are like these are like the nice to haves kind of thing so these are the the types of experience and education you know when we're going through kind of deciding with the hiring manager what will really go on here and what they really need um, in the job, you know, to, to perform the job well and to be able to answer um, to, you know, to the needs of the organization, um, uh, you know, bottom line to Canadians, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes these are the things that we're just not quite ready to drop, um, to be honest. Um, these are things where I think are, are still would be, you know, like I said, nice to have. Um, so if you're, if you're selecting candidates, um, you know, based on the essential qualifications, which they really actually must have to do the job, um, then these sometimes depending on, again, depending on, on a number of things, it could be, you know, number of applicants who applied. So maybe if there's too many applicants um, or too many qualified candidates we're thinking, we might go and see like who actually told us Um, that they meet some of this experience or the education, right? Um, and sometimes things change in, in organizations too by the time that these processes are advertised and then by the time that they close and we're ready for assessments, um, you know, things might change uh, and we might determine that, you know, at, at this certain point, um, one of these maybe experiences might be, might be more important. Um, so we might look, be looking at that. So if you do have some of these, um, one or two or all or some, you know, um, you will be given the opportunity to do to, to, to identify that um, and to demonstrate that in the screening questionnaire or your, your cover letter or, what, or whatever it is, uh, whatever it is they're, they're asking. Um, and, and sometimes it's a, it's a, you know, basic yes or no, I have this, I don't have this. So sometimes that's might, might be enough of what we were asking, but then sometimes we're also asking for, again, more of the depth and breadth of what we were asking for essential, uh, qualifications. Um, we might, you, we might want to get that kind of information from you too, um, to see, you know, you're, if you're telling us that you have, um, this providing advice to senior management on certain policies or, um, you know, where did you obtain that? Um, you know, when was that? What, what exactly did you do? And so you never know. So they, they might be used and they may not be used, but it's still important to say if you do have some of those or not. So it's important, basically it's important not dismiss it. You know, if you, you know, identify it, if you have, it'll give you, I'm assuming maybe an advantage over other candidates that doesn't, I, I, If it does, could. like if, if that's what the hiring manager, yeah, it could, could. <laughs> keywords, yes. it could give you a small advantage. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. uh, I mean, the, the next question that I, uh, I have was for the, I think the way that this particular poster is built, there's kind of like three sections, if that's what I understood of, um, of qualifications. So, dans la section, uh, est-ce qu'il y a une différence entre other qualifications or autres et à tout, est ou est-ce que c'est les mêmes ou des fois sont, sont divisés ou différenciés? Donc, je ne sais pas si les atouts, les atouts est-ce que c'est différent de, de ce qu'on vient de discuter ou c'est la même chose? C'est plus ou moins la même chose. I think we said other qualifications, because sometimes you could probably have like different certifications maybe in here too. Um, and I think we've kind of changed the wording from asset. I think a lot of people didn't really understand what assets meant. Mm -hmm. um, I think you see that though in other places um, more and more. So Um, but I think other qualifications just mean outside of what is really required. Um, you have an opportunity to demonstrate um, whatever else, you know, the hiring manager may think could be, could be 
um, a good to have, you know, uh, but more or less, they mean the same thing. They, it could look a little bit different, but more or less assets or are the other qualifications that we could be looking for. Um, okay. So if we, um, if we move towards uh, one of my favorite questions, to be quite honest, um, official languages and its requirements, <laughs> um, where does it fit into the process? I know we saw it at the top uh, where we it was mentioned, the, pro, the linguistic profile was mentioned at the, at the top of the process. But I see like in this poster, it does also identify various language requirements. So is there a difference or is there anything specific? Like what does that mean in this poster, for example? So in, yeah, what we see here, um, I mean, various language requirements means that they might be using this process to staff various positions in the organization that may, uh, that may mean some of them are bilingual and some of them um, are English essential. So that's what that means there. Um, at the point, uh, you know, at the time of advertising, I think that we saw in the first page there how they have, you know, it seemed like they had an immediate need to staff a bilingual position, I think we saw. Um, um, and it's kind of identifying the, the, the level of bilingualism that they're, that the position. So th this is what that means. So if you see a level, whether it has Bs or Cs in it, it means that that's you know, one of their positions, one of their policy analyst positions in their organization could have a B, you know, a BBB level or a CBC level. Um, and, and that would be the requirement that you'd be, you'd be needing. Um, so perhaps, you, you know, it might be one of the jobs where you write more or, or something like that. So, so that, that is dependent on the classification of, of the position, um, which would be determined by the organization. So in this case, various language requirements means you could be applying to, um, to jobs that are bilingual and some that are English. Um, and what that means is that um, if, you know, come the end of the process, depending on when, when the organization wishes to um, test you for your second um, official language, then um, you would have the opportunity to say, you know, are you interested in, in a bilingual position? Um, are you only interested in uh, English essential positions or, you know, unilingual uh, positions? So, mm -hmm. I mean, you would have the opportunity uh, throughout the process to kind of to say that. Um, and again, I mean, if you are interested in a bilingual position, then, um, you know, you would have opportunities to be tested if you don't, if you haven't been tested within in the public service yet um, and, and not have valid results. So, you know, that's that would be a whole conversation um, once they would be ready at that point uh, in the selection process to identify which positions they would like to stop. And so I, I think we, we may talk a bit more about official languages in a few minutes there, but um, what if I'm applying to a position and it is a bilingual, a bilingual position, but I don't have my classification, not my classification, but I don't have my evaluations or I don't have my levels yet. And, but I'm willing to learn, let's say French, I'm, I'm willing to go to French training. Could they hire me? on that basis and give me or offer me uh, French training if I manifest it? Cause I, I know it's, I know it's being done. So I don't know if is it possible for, for lower level positions and not just uh, man cause I know management positions do get that, that training sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it depends. So mm -hmm. again, that's where it would say, right. So in this case, we're looking at various language and then it told us what the intention um, was um, at the beginning and it's telling us which positions they're going to be um, uh, hiring for. And I think some of those were bilingual. So, um, I mean, if you want to learn French, you probably maybe should be working on that, um, <laughs> you know, outside of the public service. But I mean, yes. And, and like you're saying, Catherine, there are, you know, we've seen opportunities where people have had the opportunity to, to do some language training, um, you know, uh, and, and that's what you would want to look for too, right? Like if, if you're looking to, to kind of get better in your second language and, or you want to learn, um, and you're already maybe developing that on your own and you want an opportunity in the public service to kind of maybe, you know, get that, get ahead in that, um, then you would look for maybe opportunities that specify, you know, there's, there could be language training or, you know, um, some of them, you know, some of them could say non-imperative. So that means they're looking to staff a bilingual person, 
um, but they are willing to offer language training to be able to, you know, offer that time for the person to be in full-time language training before they get into this position to be able to meet the language profile. Um, so there is that, I mean, there's a whole, you know, again, we're going to, I think we're going to talk about it uh, again a little <laughs> bit later, but that's more or less kind of where we're at. Um, and yes, maybe more senior positions have opportunities there to meet the language profile of their position. Um, but it's not to say that it's not available, um, in some various instances across the public service at different times. Yeah. Right. And I know that, I know there's also a bunch of different resources once you're inside the government Absolutely. that help you, yeah, to help you navigate language, uh, language training. Um, yeah. donc, si on retourne au reste, un petit peu les, les prochaines sections où de l'affiche. Um, on voit à l'écran tout de suite, on voit um, connaissances, capacités, compétences, qualité, compétences personnelles, exigences opérationnelles, besoins organisationnels. Donc, quel genre d'informations qu'on qu retrouverait là? Puis, um, qu qu'est-ce qu que ça veut dire? Puis, comment peut-être, je ne sais pas si rapidement, tu pourrais nous dire comment on peut essayer de démontrer ça ou est-ce que c'est des choses qui sont vraiment évaluées plus tard? Il n'y a pas vraiment de façon de le démontrer dans, dans nos questions ou dans les choses comme ça. Oui, ben c'est ça. Puis là, je suis en train de voir que mais les notes que j'ai écrites pour répondre à cette question-là sont seulement en anglais. Et donc, et voilà. Euh, vas-y, vas-y en anglais, c'est correct. Ta propre traduction. Non, ouais. non, c'est correct, ça va. Euh, donc, pour euh, euh, les connaissances, peut-être pour retourner à qu ce que tu viens de mentionner aussi. Euh, quand vous voyez ça là, sur l'affiche, euh, c'est vraiment là, des qualités, c'est comme le, le titre dit, euh, les qualifications suivantes seront utilisées ou évaluées à une date subséquente. Et donc, okay. vous n'avez pas besoin d'inclure toute cette information-là. Tu sais, peut-être organiquement, ça, ça va peut-être apparaître dans votre résumé, euh, dans votre CV et dans votre lettre, euh, lettre euh, euh, d'emploi, mais c'est vraiment, les, on va vraiment vous évaluer sur les connaissances, les capacités, les qualités et, et compétences personnelles qu'on recherche pour le processus. On va vraiment vous évaluer. Donc, ça, ça va être le contenu de -ce on, comment on va vous évaluer um, à travers du processus. Et donc, les connaissances, c'est souvent peut-être des fois un, un examen écrit ou peut-être en entrevue. Um, encore là, la capacité, là, la capacité à communiquer efficacement de vive voix et par écrit. Uh, tu sais, tu pourrais peut-être avoir un, un examen écrit qu'on pourrait t'envoyer. Euh, euh, nous allons peut-être évaluer votre communication euh, euh, orale, là, à, communication de, euh, à communiquer de vive voix euh, par, à travers de votre entrevue. Euh, si jamais là, qu euh, que le processus comprend au moins euh, un, un outil d'évaluation qui pourrait être une entrevue. Euh, même chose pour les compétences euh, interpersonnelles ou personnelles entre gens l'initiative. Euh, c'est vraiment là, des compétences. Qu'est-ce que peut-être qu'est-ce que je suggérais pour afin de pouvoir se préparer à une, à une entrevue ou à un examen, c'est vraiment de regarder, de trouver des, des, des définitions. En tout cas, moi, ça je fais. Euh, je trouve euh, peut-être une, une définition de qu'est-ce que peut-être initiative voudrait dire pour un, un ministère. Et donc, euh, de là, je me prépare en genre de plan. C'est un petit peu la même chose qu'on discutait pour les qualifications essentielles. C'est vraiment Donnez-nous des exemples ou, ou, ou peut-être qu que, comment vous pensez vous pourriez rencontrer ces connaissances-là ou les capacités ou les habiletés euh, qu'on aimerait évaluer puis, puis nous trouver des exemples afin de voir euh, si vous êtes le bon candidat, là, si vous êtes capable d'obtenir ces informations-là et, et de bien nous identifier ou, ou, nous, ou nous démontrer comment vous rencontrer, exemple, quelque chose comme le jugement. Euh, Peut-être la dernière partie aussi, là, je sais, je vais regarder dans mes notes euh, très, très rapidement. Euh, exigence opérationnelle. Euh, et là, c'est une autre chose. C'est comme ça, c'est des exigences où est-ce que vous devriez être, comme que ça l'indique, être apte et disposé à, à dans cet exemple-ci, à faire des heures supplémentaires à l'occasion, à voyager à l'occasion. Donc, c'est vraiment là, euh, en regardant la fiche, est-ce que c'est quelque chose que vous pensez que vous pouvez faire? Parce que rendu là à la fin du processus, puis si jamais vous vous qualifiez dans le processus, um, c'est qu'est-ce que le gestionnaire va, 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 va vouloir que tu rencontres, que, que, que tu, quelque chose que tu puisses pouvoir faire. Um, puis des fois, là, des fois on les met aussi dans les exigences opérationnelles, mais uh, aussi des fois, tu pourras des différentes choses là-dedans de pouvoir, tu dois 
je sais pas, là, tu, tu, tu vas pouvoir, euh, tu vas devoir peut-être comme euh, lever des choses pesantes ou quoi mm. que ce soit dans ton travail. Et donc, peut-être que ce serait des choses aussi, tu sais, si jamais que ça, ça continue, c'est, c'est, c'est des choses que, tu sais, des fois, ça arrive dans ton travail, ça pourrait rester comme une distance opérationnelle. Mais si jamais que ça devient quelque chose que se refaire à chaque jour, tout le temps, puis quand, tu sais, ça continue, puis et ça, ça fait, vraiment, ça fait vraiment partie de ton travail, euh, là, je pense qu'on rentre dans les conditions d'emploi. Euh, aussi. Donc, je te laisse sur la prochaine page, mais euh, c'est vraiment là, des choses où est-ce que tu dois pouvoir accepter de pouvoir faire euh, en, en, faisant, en, en acceptant le poste. Puis, j'imagine que ces choses-là, tu sais, là, je parle en hypothétique, c'est sûr, là, mais tu sais, si tu, tu reçois le poste où tu, 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 tu commences à travailler euh, dans ce, ce, ce poste-là, puis tu sais, t'es, ta situation change, euh, des choses comme ça, fait que, J'imagine que c'est des conversations à avoir avec le, le gestionnaire, le superviseur, oui. Oui, oui, oui. C'est important de pouvoir communiquer avec le gestionnaire aussi. Disant, parce que voyager, des fois, on, on, moi, je verrais ça et je suis comme, ah, oh, OK, ce serait le fun, je pourrais je vais pouvoir voyager dans ce poste ici. Mais des fois, c'est à l'occasion qu'on fait ça l'indique, ce n'est pas tout le temps. Euh, Puis, il y a des choses qui arrivent. Donc, euh, oui, c'est toujours important de pouvoir en parler avec le gestionnaire. OK. Euh... Puis, je pense que tu, tu l'as mentionné juste avant de, de terminer, mais on, on parlait de conditions d'emploi. Donc, uh, if we can maybe go to the next, uh, the next page um, to show uh, conditions of employment. So, here we're talking about, um, there's just a security clearance in it. And I'll talk, I'll ask a question about the security clearance, but you can maybe also add in if there's anything else that you see in the condi- conditions of employment. Um, but, like, let's, Let's say in this case, like I have my reliability uh, clearance in, and I'm applying to this job. Would I automatically be disqualified because it's a secret security clearance or is there a way to apply for the clearance at some other point in the process? Yes, this is really just it's there to indicate, you know, what you will need, um, mm-hmm. which basically means, you know, like our You know, are you think you do you think you're good to be able to apply <laughs> to a, a secret security clearance, right? Um, and it, it's funny how you mentioned it, like from one way to the other. And for me, what I was thinking um, when I was reading this was like, okay, yeah, I mean, I have a secret level, but then I'm applying to an enhanced reliability, right? So does that work? Um, so yeah, the answer is yes, it, it, it works. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if it'll come a time in the selection process when Um, HR will communicate with you or the hiring manager will communicate with you to say, okay, we're, we're, you know, we're done the process. You've qualified up to this point. Um, we would like to kind of attack this, the, this part of the process. Now um, there are f- forms to fill out. Um, and then that's when you would provide your personal information, your work information. Um, you would be providing years of experience of work and where you, you, you've done all of that. So be able to, to obtain a security clearance. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, you will be asked. And I assume that if I have a security clearance already, I'm going to another department and it's the same, let's say it's just reliable from one place to the next, it kind of gets transferred. So it, yes. I don't need to do anything. Okay. That's what I figured. <laughs> it will be transferred and, and your HR, um, And your HR peeps there will will help you with all of that for <laughs> sure. And sometimes it's seamless. You don't even know that it's happening. It's already happened. So uh, the joys of the secrets of HR. Yeah, exactly. Um, and is there anything else that you'd find? Because you mentioned, um, like we talked about security clearance. We said that sometimes like the traveling may be in the conditions of employment, um, lifting heavy objects. Is there anything else that would pop up in that section or... Kind yeah, of I mean, in conditions of employment, those will be included. I mean, if you are qualified, if you are selected for the job, um, that the information that's there will be included in your in your letter of offer. Mm-hmm. So we'll be you'll be signing off on that, right? Um, attesting or, or accepting that you have a secure a valid secu- security clearance. Um, and that you are willing to meet over the, you know, for the course of the job that you're in, uh, for the duration of that job, that you will be able to continue meeting those conditions of employment. Um, and, and, you know, even those, those aspects where you're willing, you're willing to meet. Um, so if they're there uh, in your letter of offer, it means that you're fully accepting to be able to meet those throughout the, throughout the duration of your employment in that position. Awesome. 
Um, so before we move on, uh, just a reminder that you can submit your questions through WooClap. Uh, Lynn will be answering the, a few questions in a few minutes. Actually, we're coming to the end of the poster. Uh, just a reminder that you can upvote the questions by uh, clicking on the little cl hand clapping symbol. So that's kind of cool. So you can up, uh, upvote the questions um, that you'd like for us or for Lynn actually to answer. I'm not the expert here. So Lynn, uh, Lynn will answer the questions in a few minutes. Um, so finally, we, we're getting to the final part of the, the, the poster. Um, quelle autre information ou quel, quel genre d'information qu'on trouve dans la section autres renseignements? Euh, encore une fois, un peu comme le, la même question que j'avais pour toutes les autres sections, mais est-ce que c'est de la même information ou c'est de l'information qui se répète d'une fois à l'autre ou euh, il y a des, vraiment des choses spécifiques qu'il faudrait qu'on qu s'assure de, de, de lire et de bien comprendre dans cette section-là? Oui, ben, encore là, c'est la même chose. C'est comme qu'on a dit. Qu'est-ce qui est indiqué là, c'est vraiment... Um, Qu'est-ce qui que, ça, ça va donner de l'information sur, comme ici, on voit um, sur l'équité en matière d'emploi. Um, ça va vous indiquer qu'est-ce qu'on recherche uh, dans le poste, dans le, dans, au ministère, en termes d'équité en emploi. Um, là, je ne peux pas tout voir. Qu'est-ce que ça dit? C'est correct. Um, je vais juste peut-être avoir des idées là, de pouvoir, je ne vais pas oublier rien. Um, ça vous indique comment postuler. Um, mm -hmm. Il va peut-être avoir de l'information là-dessus, um, si tu es autochtone, um, sur uh, l'autodéclaration. Il pourrait. Um, donc, c'est des genres de choses là, qui tu voudrais peut-être lire. Ce n'est pas toujours la même chose sur chaque affiche. Mm. Et donc, c'est important de lire um, et de bien pouvoir se préparer là, uh, et anticiper qu ce qui s'en vient dans le processus aussi. Euh, tu viens de le mentionner parce qu'on on le voit à l'écran, l'équité en matière d'emploi. Um, yeah. Y une, est que, pourquoi je devrais me mauto identifier euh, Parce que je sais qu'il y, y a un formulaire là, quand on remplit l'application ou peu importe, mais on peut s'auto-identifier comme étant partie euh, des, des différents groupes de minorités ou euh, des groupes d'équité, excuse-moi. Euh, donc, y a-t-il une... Ouais, c'est quoi, quoi l'avantage, le bénéfice ou pourquoi je devrais euh, m'auto-identifier quand, quand je remplis mon application Oui, je pense um self-identifying you know it's it's, it's voluntary it's mm -hmm. completely you own it right okay. um if you're willing to self-identify that's really up to you um i think you'll hear a lot of people say you know you really should or you know it's highly recommended um but i know i don't know um this is a really tough question and i, I was having a hard time <laughs> determining what i was going to say here May unaid I mean, I'm Indigenous and I've always self-identified from the first day when I started in the public service. Um, mais ça veut pas dire que que tout le monde devrait le faire. Um, you you might feel that in some instances you feel it's important to self-identify. Some other times you may feel like you don't want to, and that's okay too. You'll have other opportunities to self-identify, self-identify in the public service if you are um, a public servant. And once you come in, uh, there'll be different opportunities uh, to be able to do so if you wish to change your your answer at some point. Um, but in terms of the selection process, I think um, if it's a selection process where, for example, um, we, we are looking at recruiting indigenous uh, indigenous candidates, there we will be asking you to. to to self-identify and self-declare um, in, in some of those cases. So, so I think there's that. Um, it's, it's a process that, you know, it, it's open to everyone and, um, it, the, you know, it's, it's really up to you, however you feel uh, about it. I mean, it could give you opportunities along the way um, and, and it's really up to you on how you feel about that. But you will hear us say, you know, you really should self-identify um, <laughs> because, yeah, you know, like it, it could give you opportunities for development, uh, developmental opportunities, learning opportunities and, and and other programs that you could apply to also. But if you're applying to to specific programs, uh, to employment um, equity seeking groups, then then you may be asked to self-identify. Okay. So it's a, it's a personal choice. You know, you yeah. don't, it's not mandatory. You don't need to. to Voluntary. To, yeah. Develop. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're approaching maybe the, the time clo we're close to the time of uh, going to the questions for participants from participants. But before we do, I just wanted to go through again quickly um, 
the official languages part of a process because um, it does mention in this section that um, the candidates can uh, le en français je le vois juste en français là, les candidats ont le droit de participer au processus de nomination dans la langue officielle de leur choix donc ça j'imagine que ça veut dire que c'est pendant tout le processus donc si je décide de changer tu de faire mon examen en, en anglais mais faire mon entrevue en français c'est possible c'est possible. OK. Puis si, le poste, puis si le poste est anglais essentiel, est-ce que je peux quand même faire le reste de mon évaluation en français? Ouais. Oui. Oui, oui, vous pouvez, vous pouvez évaluer à la de votre choix um, à, à, à travers du processus um, ou à travers de l'évaluation du processus. Uh, puis, tu sais, si, uh, on peut peut-être te poser une petite question là, afin de voir si oui. tu peux parler en français soit ou en français ou en anglais, dépendant mais, si c'est un poste une langue, mais, mais oui. Um, en, en espérant qu'il um, va y avoir euh, des membres de sélection sur euh, votre entrevue qui va être bilingue, qui va pouvoir répondre à vos questions, qui va pouvoir bien comprendre euh, que, l'information que vous, que vous nous fournissez, um, soit à l'entrevue ou à l'examen. Mm -hmm. um, la plupart là, des, des, des membres de, de sélection là, um, sont bilingues. Uh, on essaie toujours de trouver des, des gestionnaires bilingues euh, et aussi, des fois, c'est tu sais, parfois, là, on, on voit ça de plus en plus aussi, euh, la représentativité euh, sur les membres d'équité. Donc, en, mm. en étant comme une personne autochtone, euh, moi, j'aimerais, tu sais, j'aime voir l'inclusivité euh, dans les processus mm. de sélection et, et en avant de moi, c'est avec qui je parle. Euh, Est-ce que la personne va pouvoir me comprendre, d'où je viens, euh, tu sais, comment je m'exprime et tout ça. Donc, euh, oui, oui, oui. Là, comme, oui, vous pouvez euh, <rire> choisir la langue de votre choix là, pour, pour l'évaluation. Puis, hein, j'imagine que c'est la même chose, peu importe où je me trouve au pays. Tu sais, je, on a peut-être tendance à penser si on est dans la région de la capitale nationale ou au Québec ou euh, dans certaines régions, mais est-ce que c'est est, est pareil partout que je me retrouve d'une côte à une côte à une côte? Ben j'espère. <rire> je l'espère. Mais aussi, c'est comme j'ai mentionné tantôt aussi. Um, tu sais, aussitôt que vous avez de l'information, c'est peut-être important, ce serait peut-être important de le mentionner aux ressources humaines ou, ou la personne contacte sur le processus mm. um, afin qu'ils puissent s'organiser. Um, tu sais, pour vraiment leur rencontrer les besoins des candidats uh, qui seront évalués. C'est une autre chose. Ben, c'est excellent, c'est un, un, bon, un bon point. Puis ça fait un bon, une bonne liaison avec euh, le dernier point pour la, qui est sur la fiche, la personne contact. Donc, le contact information, there's usually, the, here we have the HR advisor, we don't have a name or anything, but sometimes there's a name, there's a person that you can communicate with. Is there anything that you should think about asking or things that you should avoid asking? I know that we talked about not trying to send your application a day late if uh, <laughs> if you've missed the application but is there anything that you any tips or tricks or information that we should ask or share with the with that person yeah, i mean there's a contact there um mm. what i would probably say though just for in my experience when i've been the person responsible for answering inquiries on selection processes you might want to start asking at the beginning of the process and not maybe the last evening uh to be able to be For, you know, for us to gather the information, sometimes we don't know ourselves as HR advisors. If, if we're the contact person on there, uh, we will have to go in and get the information from either a board member or the hiring manager. So we need the time to be able to, to gather the information, to be able to respond to you. And, um, Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, if you have questions, if there's some, you know, maybe an error between the English mm -hmm. and the French, you want to correct that early. So we want to know. Um, and yeah, I mean, there was something that you said, Catherine, that I don't remember now, but um, I don't yeah, remember. You, I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> it. I mean, I, I think you, you want to do that earlier on if you do want to communicate with us. Mm -hmm. um, if any of your personal information changes, like your contact information, oh, yeah. we're emailing you at a different address. Um, you want us, you want us, you want that to be known to us, to be able to, to be able, again, it's for you to succeed, right? So mm -hmm. if, if you have information that we need to know, accommodations, um, 
you know, sending in your application. Yeah. If you're sending in your application um, after the closing date and if, if, you know, the HR person reading your, reading the mailbox, you may not get an answer <laughs> um, and your application may not be, be considered. But I mean, if there's anything related to the process where it has to do with you being able to apply properly, then yes, you can do that. Awesome. Well, that was it for the poster itself. We, I can't believe we went through the whole thing and the amount of time we were supposed to go through. Lynn, I'm very proud of you and, and oh, me too a little bit. Was <laughs> yeah. That was so, hard. <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, this concludes the part of the poster, um, but we will be answering some of the questions that you've submitted through WooClap. Um, donc, on va, Lynn va répondre à quelques questions euh, qui ont été soumises euh, via WooClap. Donc, vous allez, devriez les voir à l'écran bientôt. Voilà. Euh, donc, on va lire les questions dans la langue officielle qu'elles ont été soumises. Euh, mais comme on l'a mentionné pendant la session, euh, il y a quand même l'opportunité d'avoir la, la traduction simultanée dans l'une ou l'autre langue officielle. Donc, on vous invite à, à aller voir de ce côté-là si jamais vous voulez la traduction. Euh, donc, puis une dernière petite chose, puis je pense que Josh va peut-être le, le mentionner à la fin de la session, mais euh, inquiétez-vous pas si toutes les questions ne sont pas répondues, on ne pourra certainement pas répondre à toutes les questions que vous avez soumises, mais merci. Euh, mais elles seront accumulées, puis elles seront, on va essayer de répondre euh, dans une session future pendant le camp de carrière. So, we'll be trying to answer all of the questions eventually. Um, Um, career Bootcamp, but I don't want to steal Josh's punch and we need to get to the questions. So, um, so Lynn, maybe we can start with the first questions that we're seeing on the screen. Um, so, will my first language be tested if I identify as French but complete the process in English? Um, and will I be tested for my French? I think we kind of answered it a bit at the end there, but maybe can we just go back a little bit, answer that question? Yeah, maybe if I just use myself as an example, maybe yeah. that could help. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, uh, my first official language is French. And so um, some people don't believe me, but um, <laughs> it is what it is. My first language is French. Um, and so, you know, I was tested for um, English, you know, when I first started in the public service. Um, and in terms of, and I think we covered it earlier too, uh, I mean, in, in the assessment phase, mm -hmm. um, I switched between French and English and I don't even notice. So I, I try to warn board members uh, before I get assessed and I say, you know, like, I don't even notice when I switch between English and French and doing events like this today, uh, structuring it between English and French is very difficult for me. Um, But uh, yeah, I mean, you, you will choose your, your first official language, um, which will determine your second official language. So hopefully that answers. Awesome. I see that the, I see people are kind of. Uh, There's so many questions. Yeah, I know. I see <laughs> people are kind of voting. So the questions are moving. So we'll try to, we'll always go with the first one that we see. So um, Can you apply for an internal position for a completely different organization in the government of Canada? I'm assuming so. I'm not sure um, if I understand the question correctly. Well, I think um, I, I can attempt to answer. Yep. Um, I think if you're already internal, uh, if you're looking at the GC jobs, the jobs are there. Um, and so GC jobs contains both internal Uh, opportunities, job opportunities for within the government, um, as well as jobs open to the public. And then you'll see notifications there too for the internal jobs. So if you're looking at being promoted, um, yes, by all means, look at what's on GC jobs for internal um, public servants. Awesome. Um, this moves to... around a lot. I know. <laughs> Catherine, I'm leaving this to you. Just ask me the question. <laughs> That's okay. Um, okay, so the, the next question I see is, uh, what? Um, someone says hi. So hi, whoever submitted that question. Um, what makes it possible for one to be deployed or assigned? I understand that there are some parts of the public service that cannot be deployable, such as agencies, but can, some can. So what's kind of the difference there? Ah, tricky question. Yes. <laughs> um, I think you can probably find information um, online on this, but, and I don't really know where off the top of my head you can find it now. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's an excellent question. Yes, you can be deployed, deployed, deployed. 
uh, to organizations within the core of the public service. And there are certain agencies where um, you can be deployed also, like the Canada Revenue Agency. Um, that's happened to me before. I went from the Public Service Commission to the Canada Revenue Agency, and I went back to um, Service Canada. So it's possible. There are other agencies, though. I think there are some now that you can be deployed also that were not before. Um, so it's just a matter of maybe of kind of looking at that. But I think when you look at GC jobs, um, you can tell, right? Like it's, there are some organizations in there that, you know, State Parks Canada um, and other org or other agencies, I should say, where, um, you know, it's not quite deployable um, and you have to specifically apply to the job to be able to be considered. Um, but I mean, there are ways, and then there was the word assignments in there also. So assignments are normally within the organization itself. Um, and it would be a secondment if you would be going on assignment at the same level um, in an other organization. Um, so assignments are really internal to that department. I think there could be a separate session. A whole other session on that. Yeah. And I would hope it would those. not be me to be able to answer all those questions. <laughs> <laughs> um the next question that I see here I'm going with the ones that have the most little yeah, 24. Little hearts. yeah. so uh is an is an inventory the same thing as a pool and if not what is the difference well that's another great question we didn't even touch on that um no. in all of our discussion Catherine um yeah great question so a pool an inventory or pool um no but yes. Um, and so an inventory is really something that kind of replenishes itself. So if you're putting your name in there, they're going to be taking, you know, you maybe ask very little information. You just maybe asked your, you know, your resume, and then they might be just taking from there. Um, as part of an inventory, you might like to refresh your application in there, read 30 days or something like that, just so that it keeps kind of like um, the thing moving. Uh, whereas a pool is really more if you've, you know, qualified and you've been assessed against certain like specific criteria, then you are qualified at that level in that specific pool or process kind of thing. I mean, inventory is sort of a pool, I guess, but it's works a little bit different. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll go to the next one. And this actually, this was a question I had, and I forgot to ask it to like, ask, uh, ask the question when we were in that section. But if I answer no to any of the essential qualification screening questions, uh, will I automatically be screened out? Or is there a way I'm assuming this person is asking, I can't see the rest of it. But what if um, I have all but not all of the the, the qualifications and is there a limit to when I can get the the qualifications or the to answer those uh, those qualifications? So je sais pas si tu peux peut-être nous répondre à la question. Yeah, I can touch on that for sure. I think it had I had it in my notes, but we didn't really get to it. No. Um, and the answer is well, no. I mean, if you're if you're not meeting the essential qualifications mm -hmm. and the screening questions, and, and that's why I was saying earlier how. You really need to determine, like if it says, like, tell me where and when and how you obtain that information, like what specifically did you do? That's what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and if you tell me, no, I don't have that, you will be screened out if like the system will automatically do it. Um, if you say no on something that is re like required or deemed as essential. Um, and again, right, like if if you feel like it's, this is really something that you want to apply to, that gives you an indication of what you don't quite meet yet. And maybe that's something that you want to put in a, like a learning plan or, 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 or you know, personal uh, performance plan where you want to develop those certain skills or competencies um, over the next, you know, six months to a year or whatever it is to be able to apply next time when you see something like this or something similar. And if I can put a shameless plug in there, getting involved uh, in networks and committees and anything that's kind of not, that's outside of your uh, regular job, um, that'll give you, um, not, I don't want to say an advantage, but you'll, you'll be able to develop some of the qualifications or the competencies that you may not necessarily develop in your day-to-day -day job. So I'm, I'm not pretending I'm an expert. I just know this for a fact because I... <laughs> Absol I'm involved. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think I had that somewhere in my notes too, thinking about networks, you know, um, I think we didn't really touch on, you know, like how, um, how to complete your application and what if I am missing anything um, and like, who can help me mm -hmm. then? I mean, if you're, if you're, you know, well-prepared and you have something written, 
you can, you know, ask your network, ask somebody that you rely on. Maybe you have a coach, maybe you want to spend one of your sessions on that on, you know, I want to focus on how I can explain, you know, how I meet judgment or um, is, would this be a good example for this kind of competency? You can ask these questions with your, to your network, your coach, um, maybe a colleague too. um, Or if you know someone who succeeded on a similar selection process at some point, you know, maybe ask them for tips. So, so kind of, yeah. That really helps too. Awesome. Um, I'll, the next question, um, I'll ask it in French because it's in bi- it's bilingual, so je vais la poser en, en français. Puis j'adore cette question là. Mon application est-elle retenue par un humain ou un programme informatique? Ça, je me l'ai posé très souvent cette question là. <laughs> um, well, uh, that's a really good question, and uh, well, what I would say human. Um, uh, for the time being anyways, I mean, I, I think there's going to be some, maybe some changes in the future on the type of systems that we work with, um, or apply them. But I mean, for now it's a human, it's a HR person and a hiring manager, um, and a probably sometimes multiples of each of those who are looking through this, um, as well as HR, you know, admin assistants, they are kind of the gold around all of that and helping us decipher, you know, who meets what the pre-selection um, and then throughout the whole selection phase and, and, and the assessment phase too. So yeah, humans. <laughs> humans. So you, those processes where there's like 500 applicants, humans go through the, the whole thing. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Well, yeah. And, and I've, I've been, I, <laughs> I've managed pro- selection processes. I've had more than 500 also. Oh so God. yes, it, it was humans. I mean, I mean, I, I think some the the system does have some capacities for sure, depending on the situation. Um, but most of the case, it is humans. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, next question. We know that we shouldn't apply late. <laughs> I think we made, we kind of made that clear. Um, but is there any advantage to submitting our application early in the application process? Do you like does it come in an order or? Yeah. Well, I think I was sort of touching to it, touching on that earlier too. I mean, the earlier you are in the process, the less chances of problems that you're going to get mm-hmm. into. Um, and I mean, I've seen some instances where. You know, I mean, uh, the GC job system is very good at, at notifying you of, of any problems that may be anticipated or like any um, system upgrades or shutdowns. The system will tell you and, and the PSC is very good at doing that. Um, but you want to be prepared, right? So if you see the poster, start filling out those boxes because it, it could take you a little while too. Um, so you don't want to kind of leave it at the end, the last hour, you never know, like you could get a blue screen on your computer and then that's it. Right. Um, and so you want to be prepared. Um, next question. What makes an application stand out? Which I'm assuming can be kind of hard when it's a standardized type of, uh, of system when everybody's submitting their, their things at the same way. So is there a way to make yourself stand out? Well, you know, so- <laughs> Sometimes I wasn't prepared for this question, but I have an answer. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Sometimes answering the way that we're suggesting that you do it will make you stand out. Awesome. So by saying, you know, when it says to include dates and like specific times to go, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. You really good to know. It makes everyone's life easier and that will make you stand out. Awesome. That's kind of so just to listen to what they <laughs> read what read. they're saying. Yeah. Read. I think yes, that's key, sure. the key takeaway from the session today for sure. Reading every single part of the of the poster. Um, I think we have time for a few more questions. Give you one more question, and I have a personal question. <laughs> I'm gonna plug plug my question in there. Um, so one last question. Um, how would you advise to request for feedback for a selection process in which you did not make it through? Oh my God, that's the question I was gonna ask. Someone read my mind. <laughs> in which you did not make it through the first screening step. When can you ask for results of an exam you wrote for the position? So I'm assuming someone wants to know that. Yeah. 
Yeah, we didn't even talk about feedback, but yeah, if you're part of um, an internal process, you will be given the opportunity to ask for informal discussion um, after every stage of the process. So once we're ready, um, you may be asking, you may, you may not have heard from us in a little while, but I mean, once we get through all um, assessments for each stage of the process, you will be hearing from HR or the hiring manager um, to, and that will be your opportunity there to, to seek informal discussion or feedback is what it's called internally. If you're part of an external process, um, there it depends, you know, we don't, we're not really, really required to give you feedback. Um, but a lot of the cases where, where I've, I've, you know, I've worked on external processes, um, you know, you ask us for feedback, depending on the number of applicants, you know, there's always Mm -hmm. a situation, but I mean, you know, what's the harm in asking, ask, um, that's the way that you're going to be able to succeed on these the next time, right? If, if there's, you know, something that went wrong this time, um, and then you didn't quite respond. Um, sometimes we may not give you in depth, you know, depending on the size of the process, especially with external processes, and we're not required to give you feedback, but, um, we could give you some information, um, which some information is better than no information. Right. So I would say, just ask and see, and see what happens. Awesome. So that's I, I was going to, I'm going to ask another question now because that was the question I had for you. So, <laughs> yep. so oh, 19 <laughs> people get lucky now. <laughs> exactly. So the last question, I think we can, we'll finish on this question here. Um, I'm in 10 active pools, uh, recently graduated with a degree and feeling stuck in my group and level. How can I take the next step in my career development? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, and again, I think we could have a whole event just on this question. Career boot and, camp. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this career boot camp, exactly. This is only day one yeah, exactly. for you guys. But um, yeah, I mean, I've heard so many stories of persons, you know, uh, qualifying in so many processes and kind of marketing that information. You know, you could you could also put it if you're if you're already internal. Um, you could put it on career marketplace. So like GC connects career marketplace, you can say that. Um, and, and you'll even notice some inventories now on GC jobs where I was looking through the other day, there's lots of those where they're asking, you, you know, like have, we're looking for you. We are looking for people who have qualified at this level. Um, and you know, is this you? So you might want to look for that too. Um, and then, yeah, if you're really feeling stuck, I mean, it's happened to me before um, where, you know, just start talking to people. Like you said, Catherine, network. Mm. Um, there's career marketplace. There's so many networks internal to the public service. And what and what I do, you know, personally, not that we're not busy enough in the public service, but, you know, when I, I'm sitting there and uh, my partner is watching YouTube, um, not always into educational. Um, I'm I'm on like Coursera and I'm, I'm looking up courses and I'm, I'm looking through all of the courses at the Canada Public you know, Canada School of Public Service too. Like I'm looking for those little like 30 minutes quick, you know, kind of refreshers um, and, you know, things where it might help me in my current job to get me maybe to my next job. So those are just maybe little tips there. And I think, and it's like I, I mentioned at the beginning of the question, you know, just participating in, uh, in career boot camp. That'll give you great, <laughs> great, oh, yeah. uh, great tips and tricks. And um, I think, uh, I think at the end of this, you'll you'll probably have more knowledge on how to move uh, your career. And I got a note from the one of the organizers saying that tomorrow's session actually is on strategically building your career in the government of Canada. So that may be a session you wanna you wanna participate in. Um, to whoever uh, asked that question. So I hope that I hope that you get to find information that's uh that's going to help you out here so that's it for our session today lynn we did it <laughs> we did. Um, that would go so fast i know i always so panic funny. And worry, I'm not prepared, I'm not prepared, <laughs> but then the hour goes so quickly. So, Thank merci you. beaucoup, beaucoup, Lynn, euh, d'avoir de, 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 de partagé tes connaissances avec nous. C'était vraiment apprécié. Euh, puis, merci euh, à l'équipe du Réseau des jeunes fonctionnaires fédéraux d'avoir organisé le cas carrière. Puis, je vais céder la parole à Josh pour euh, fermer la session. 
Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Excellent. Merci beaucoup, Catherine et Hélène. Um, alors, ceci met fin à notre événement. Um, alors, j'aimerais remercier uh, Catherine, Hélène um, et vous tous à travers le pays d'avoir participé à cet événement. So, a huge thanks to Lynn, a huge thanks to Catherine. Um, and thank you, everyone, for, for participating, for submitting your questions, for being actively engaged um, in today's session. Um, and as, uh, as we noted at the start of the session, the resources pages uh, will be updated daily um, with any of the resources that we share uh, throughout uh, Career Bootcamp. Um, and we, uh, we certainly hope you enjoyed uh, today's uh, first webcast for Career Bootcamp. Um, registration will be open for Career Bootcamp until uh, the last session on January 28th. So if you have any colleagues, if you have any friends, if you have any people who work for you or work with you who would like to register, it's not too late. Um, and they can continue to register and, uh, and participate in any of the upcoming sessions over the next uh, week and a half. Um, if you haven't heard the answer to your question, or if you have more questions, um, join us for the last event uh, of Career Bootcamp, uh, the uh, CBC Power Panel. Um, ask us anything on January 28th. Um, alors, cet événement aura, aura lieu le 20, vendredi le 28 janvier à 13h, heure de l'Est, um, et répondra aux questions des participants que nous avons reçues lors des séances. You can also ask your questions throughout um, Career Bootcamp and any of the other sessions. Um, and uh, Lynn is just one of uh, our many uh, knowledgeable and engaging subject matter experts. Um, and we're, we're very happy that, uh, that you were able to join us today, Lynn, and very great moderation, uh, Catherine. Um, the recording of this session will also be shared with you on the school's YouTube channel. Um, in the meantime, you can check out um, our video on career basics from October 2020, uh, which is available on the FYN's YouTube channel. Um, so Lynn, uh, Lynn is a frequent flyer with, uh, with Career Bootcamp, but also with uh, the Federal Youth Network. So we're happy to tap into her, uh, her expertise um, uh, uh, on many occasions throughout uh, the last couple of years. Um, our next session for Career Bootcamp will start at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, with standout resume formats and techniques uh, with sessions in English and French. Um, so for those, we will have separate sessions for English and French. Alors on va avoir des séances uh, séparées uh, en anglais et en français um, pour le, le prochaine séance. Uh, your feedback is very important to us um, and you will be receiving an electronic questionnaire um, following Career Bootcamp, which we, uh, we hope you will complete um, and provide us with information on where we can, uh, where we can improve, what you liked, what you didn't like, um, and uh, what you'd like to see going forward. Um, the school has many more events to offer you, and I encourage you to visit uh, their website to keep up to date um, and register for future learning opportunities. But once again, thank you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll hope to see you at uh, many of the future sessions for Career Program. Merci beaucoup, et puis uh, aussi partagez vos pensées en utilisant uh, le hashtag CBC uh, underscore CDC um, pour, uh, pour chacun de vos pensées uh, de cette uh, séance et des autres séances. Thanks very much, everyone. Have a great day.